Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about why is it so hard to get your first job in medical coding and what are some of the things that you can do about it. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. This is a very hot button issue in the industry. Everybody wants experience. And how are you supposed to get experience if no one will hire you? <sighs> if we could only change this part about the industry, right? Everybody goes through this. This is not personal, okay? You gotta know that up front and right off the bat. This is not personal. It's not anything towards you. This is just the industry and this is what it demands. I, that's why I'm always making a plea on my channel <laughs> that if you're gonna get into those managerial positions that you give brand new medical coders a chance. And so that is just what I wanna say first off. Second off, I am not gonna be at this premiere um, because I have a meeting tonight and I am pre-filming this. So I hope that you will enjoy this content. Leave a comment in, in the uh, comment section below or you know just have a good conversation <laughs> and I will catch up on it later. So uh, let us begin. All right, first things first. Yes, you're gonna run into some resistance when you first get out into the real world and you're trying to apply for jobs. The main thing that you cannot do is give up. The only way to fail is to completely give up on something. It doesn't matter how many times you get rejected. We've all been rejected multiple times. I went for two months searching for a job until I finally went back to the um, trade school that I was being trained at and I asked for help. I was like, I've been applying everywhere. I don't know what to do. There was nobody out there <laughs> at that time to say that you have to keep applying everywhere. So he put me in touch with um, a friend of his that was working as a, as a temporary agency, right? She had her own temporary agency and she specialized in medical professions. So she hired temporary doctors and, and MAs and medical coders. So, <laughs> so that's how I got my first position in medical coding was my first position was literally as a temp for three months. And that was how I got my foot in the door. It was at a cancer center. And that was the first thing that I was coding cancer, uh, cancer patients, right? So that's how I learned. That was how I got my start. And that position led me to another position, uh, which was further away and I had to move. I'm not telling you guys to move. That It always gets back to me. Blue, I don't wanna move. I'm not telling you guys to move. I'm just telling you guys my story and how it happened for me. But in the beginning, these are some of the things that you have to be willing to do. You have to be willing to put yourself out there as far as like, um, taking different approaches when you are applying and you can't have that all or nothing mindset a lot of people will say I've been trained to be a medical coder and that's exactly what I want to do I understand that trust me I'm a medical coder and I enjoy it every single day <laughs> but uh, for some the path is to get to a medical coder is different so what they do is they go in through medical billing they get a position as a medical biller and then they take those skills and transfer it, transfer it to uh, a position for medical coding. Or they do risk adjustment coding. Risk adjustment coding is strictly um, diagnosis coding. So, um, but they're, they're often not looking for credentialed people to even do that. So that is something when you're looking in these job postings to look under risk adjustment coding and see, or risk adjustment, to see if you can get in that way because putting on there that you've had experience in diagnosis coding is going to get you a lot further than having no experience at all right and so then there's also uh, working in medical records now medical records isn't going to get you hands-on coding experience but it will get you around the people that do do the hiring for coding so that is what you want to be able to do you want to be able to get in somehow some way and then be able to transfer over to the coding. There is also a position called prior authorizations. Now prior authorizations does not require you to be certified as a medical coder either. But what prior authorization people do is they get the chart from the doctor and the doctor says, look, I want to perform this procedure 
and the patient has this diagnosis, can you make sure that this can go through to the insurance company? So it's on the person who's doing prior authorizations to contact the insurance company and say, this doctor has this patient with this diagnosis and he wants to do this procedure. Can they go ahead? And so it's yay or nay, but it's requiring you to look at the record and be able to make sure that the diagnosis and the procedures match up. So that is a very good training ground for medical coders. So this is something, these are alternatives in order for you to be able to get in. The other thing is this, and this is probably the main thing I should have said first, your resume. Now people think resume, <laughs> what, do, what do you mean by that? Your resume is your calling card. If your resume looks very run of the mill, it looks like it was copied from a book, next. The thing about resumes is this is very personal to you. This is very personal as far as like your experience. And if you say, well, Blue, I hate writing and I don't want to write a resume, that's something that you're going to have to get used to because it's not just writing your resume <laughs> and that's it, it stops. There's also your cover letter as well. So the thing about these resumes is this is the first thing that the provider, the provider, your employer, your potential employer is going to see. So that's why you want to make sure that it looks your best, your very best. All right. So that means you got to make sure that everything looks good. It's on one or two pages, two pages max. Okay. Typically it is one page, but uh, for some folks it takes two pages and that's okay. Make sure that it's not all bunched up and you know, looking weird. Uh, I do also do resume reviews. So if you're interested in that, I will leave my information in the description box below on how to book a session for that. Um, but it's very important that you put down all of your skills, even if you've never been a medical coder or you've never been in the setting of the medical field before, you still have transferable skills. Can you work a Microsoft Office Outlook suite, right? Oh, Outlook suite, uh, <laughs> Microsoft Office uh, uh, suite, right? So it's Outlook, Excel, Word, PowerPoint. Can you do those things? If you can, you gotta put it on your resume. Do you know your medical terminology and anatomy and pathophysiology? That has to be on your resume as well. People look at me funny, like, really? Like, why would, it? that's common sense. Like, you would have to have that. But uh, believe it or not, a lot of times these resumes are going through a computer software program and it's scanning for words to see if you have what it takes from what they've asked on the um, resume, on the job posting. And it's going to it's going to look for those words. If those words that are on the job posting are not on your resume, there's a good chance your resume is going to be passed over, especially if it's being looked at by a computer. So pay attention to each one of these job postings that you're applying for and don't put out the same resume. Somebody wrote me a few months back and said that they had sent out 200 plus resumes and they said they had to finally move in order to start their first job as a medical coder. I can pretty much guarantee if that person sent out 200 resumes that they were pretty much all the same. So if you have the same resume trying to go to, to different positions that are asking for different things, there's a good chance it's going to get looked over. I mean, looked past because, you know, it's, it's not going to meet what they're requiring. So that's why it's very important that you pay attention to these job postings. I've done uh, job posting reviews for medical coding. Uh, and medical billing. And I've talked about some of the words and what does this mean? So I will leave that playlist in the description box below. Check it out. So that way you guys can get some tips from there uh, because I do talk about the different things that uh, these job postings mean and what are some of the ways you can highlight your skills that are transferable. Have somebody else look over your resume, okay? If you don't wanna pay to have it looked over, that's fine. But do not, <laughs> my advice here, okay, people, <laughs> do not go to a professional resume writer. The reason that I say this is because that professional resume writer has a job to make you look as polished as possible. However, when you go in for your interview, if you do not match the cadence of that resume or that cover letter, and you are, you are completely just opposite of what uh, you have written down, they're going to know that you paid somebody to do that resume. 
And nobody's going to know your skills the way that you do. Nobody's going to be able to describe your skills the way that you do. Everybody has the ability to be able to be a good writer. Everybody. And I truly do believe that because we just have to think of ways and we have to come to a point in ourselves where we relax so that all of that communication and all of that good, good, <laughs> goodness comes out of us and to be able to put it on paper. If you have to start off in lists, good. Start off in lists. Make sure you're not repeating yourself. Make sure you don't put abbreviations in your resume because your abbreviation may be completely different from mine. So that is the first part that I wanted to say about that. And it's going to take time, guys. This is a very intellectual field that pays well. So if you have these positions that pay well and it's very intellectual, it's going to take time. And you have to be patient during this part. And you can't be willing just to give up. Um, I've had people who write me and say, well, Blue, I applied at three or four places and no one, no one is calling me back. You need to be applying at 20 and 30 and 40 different places. You cannot just sit there and take no for an answer as far as like, um, well, I'm only going to apply at these places because that's only where I want to work at. You have to be able to expand the scope. There is also auto insurance companies that are always looking for medical coders as well. So you don't always have to start your first job in a hospital or a doctor's office. It could always be for an insurance company. It could be for an attorney because believe it or not, attorneys are always looking for medical coders as well because especially those ones that have like the medical lawsuits and things like that, they need some uh, subject matter expert <laughs> to be able to look at that documentation and be able to explain to them what does this mean. So that's always an alternative that you can look into and always look for different ways of getting in. And it's not about just like, oh man, I'm not getting a job and it's just me. It's not just you. It's everybody. <laughs> everybody goes through this. And I think it is a waste. That is probably one of the things that I dislike the most about the field. If very little that I dislike about the field, it's just that, that a lot of new coders get overlooked and it just, it's, it's very heartbreaking when I hear people that say, I spent thousands of dollars to get educated and I have no job to show for it because I could never get a job. And then it's just, I always want to like look at their resume and look at what they're doing because I can guarantee there's probably something that they could push a little bit more on. Now, trust me, I have been there. I, I know, I know what it's like. I worked minimum wage. I had <laughs> a couple jobs, two or three jobs that I had. I worked at a halfway house. I was a bartender. I uh, worked at the stadium on my feet. I worked seven days a week. And trust me, when after I got done with school and after I got done with the nerves of, of passing my test and like all of a sudden it's just like two months later, I'm like, come on, you know, I, I need to get out of this because I was still working and I was so physically tired. I just wanted to do coding. That was what I wanted. And having that drive really helped me. So you have to stop and think about in those moments where you want to give it up and where you want to say, oh, I'm just tired of this. No one is ever going to hire me. You have to turn it around. Think positively. Someone will hire you. You have to be willing to be in that space of like, okay, I know I'm going to get rejected a lot. I know there's probably going to be a lot of people telling me no, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to continue to study. This is another thing too. You have to continue to study because when you are applying for these jobs and the chance that you get by them telling you, okay, we're going to send you an assessment for you to do, and then we're going to see how you do, and then we'll, we'll give you a call from there. If they send you that assessment, there's a good chance that they're going to be willing to interview you. But you have to do really good on that assessment because if you can't pass that assessment, you're not getting in and you are not going to get the call. So that's why you have to continue to study, go through these practices, uh, go through your books, whatever you use to learn and get your certification, you need to keep reviewing, keep reviewing the guidelines. There's nothing better <laughs> than somebody that can recite 
the guidelines or be able to know where to find it in the guidelines. Okay, you don't have to know it word for word, but you do have to be able to say, oh yeah, I know where to find that. <laughs> you have to be able to do those things. And having that genuineness and that drive, it will get you in the door, but you have to be there. You have to be saying, okay, and you can't get discouraged. And I know it's hard to not get discouraged, but that's something that you have to hold steadfast to is that you can't get discouraged and you can't let anybody tell you that you're not going to be able to get in because yes, you can. And you have to keep going. And if they turn you down, if you, if you apply someplace and say you get the interview and they turn you down and they open up the job posting again, you need to apply again. Keep applying because it's only going to show that you're very persistent. <laughs> and it is going to show that go-getter attitude. There's nothing better than that. A go-getter attitude, a very positive attitude, that is what a lot of employers are looking for. So you have to get to that point. And the advice that I give you guys is advice that I wish I would have had back in the day. <laughs> this was all like, I didn't know. I, I didn't know if I was going to get hired either, but I knew I had to keep going because I didn't want to have to pay back the state for not being able to get a job in the field that I was trained because I went through the WIOA program and that's who paid for me <laughs> to get my education. So now I spend my time talking about it with you guys because this was a gift to me. And so I know that this changed my life completely. Medical coding and this field of medical coding completely changed everything for me. I don't know where in my life I would be if I wasn't a medical coder. So, I mean, for me, I feel very, very fortunate to have been able to get that job in the temporary job. And even though I wasn't selected to stay on because they had selected three, three of us to do this temporary work, at the cancer therapy center. And when I didn't get selected, I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> but at least I have three months of experience, but that led me to my next position. So like I said, everybody's, everybody's journey in medical coding is gonna be different. And you have to be willing to be in the trenches and be out in the weeds and be like, okay, you know, I know it's just a little bit more and, and I can do this, but, you have to keep applying and apply everywhere. And when you're looking for jobs, don't just put in medical coder or don't just put in remote medical coder. You need to put in uh, risk adjustment or uh, prior authorizations, medical billing. That's what you want to get into. That's way, that way, if you can't get into medical coding, at least you can start somewhere, some way. Because medical coding is a very small community. <laughs> yes, there are thousands of medical coders but believe me there is five degrees of separation when it comes to medical coding so your reputation is going to precede you <laughs> so that you have to know if you want to get the reputation of being a high caliber medical coder then you need to continue to to study on even though you haven't been hired yet keep going in those things make sure you make connections make as many connections as possible be as active as you can um, in the meetings. If you're going to the virtual meetings, right? I know AAPC has them. I'm sure Ahima does too. Um, I, I just haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been to the meetings uh, for Ahima. Uh, but uh, make sure that you're making those connections. Uh, I, I don't recommend Facebook medical coding groups because everybody, the, those places tend to be very viperish, <laughs> if you will. And, uh, that is what I've always recommended to you guys only because of that, because I have seen those Facebook medical coding groups, the ones that I have seen, um, I've seen them run off people that were already scared and they scared them so much that they just gave it up. And so to me, is you need to be around positive people, especially during this time when you know it's, it's difficult to get a job. And if you're working and you're still trying to find a job in medical coding, continue working. That's what I did. You have to, because otherwise you're going to sit there with what? No job. You can't do that. You got to keep going and you got to keep working no matter what, but you got to try to find your way to get in because no matter what, if you truly really want something in your heart, you will find a way to get to it. 
And I always think about that one lady that um, she was in the, um, she wanted to see her husband and her husband was in uh, assisted living, assisted living or something. I think it was assisted living or, or some kind of a home. He was in there and uh, she, she wasn't allowed in because of the pandemic, right? And she just wanted to be with her husband and it was breaking her heart and she wanted anything she could do to get to him, to, to be around him. So she applied as a dishwasher. And I love that story. And she got her dishwasher position so that she could get in there and be with her husband or at least see him, you know, in person. So she had that much drive and that much want and desire to be by her husband that that's what she did. She did anything and everything she had to. It's the same thing when you're looking for a job in medical coding. If you can't get a job as a medical coder, try medical billing. If you can't get a job as in medical billing, try prior authorizations. If you can't do prior authorization, try a uh, risk adjustment. Somebody somewhere will let you in. I don't recommend though going for like a scheduler position because that's not going to help you. You want things that are going to put value on your resume. So putting a, a billing position on there or something like that, that's going to add value because then you've had time to review codes and things like that. At least if you haven't applied the codes, you've had time to review codes. <laughs> so good luck guys. And I know it, I know it stinks. Trust me. I know this part right now really stinks. But when you find that job, that's when everything's going to turn around. And yes, New coders do find jobs. I've had several, several who have gotten jobs and they were brand new. They had literally just gotten their certification and a couple months later they were able to get a job during the pandemic. And we're still in this pandemic. So I know if they can do it, it's, it's possible. But you just have to keep being persistent and keep going. So please don't give up. If you're out there and you're about to give up, don't give up. I'm just, I, I, don't, don't throw away your potential for a really great career because you're, you're frustrated with this part. Okay. Just remember there's a bunch of people before you that have gone through this. The vast majority of medical coders have gone through this. They have to be able to hire new people at some point. And sometimes if there's no qualified people in the area, they will take, uh, take on new medical coders. So that is my advice for today, but yes. And there's a myriad of reasons why they don't hire brand new coders right away. And it could vary from, they don't want to have to train, uh, which is why I tell you guys to make sure that you continue to study because you know, that way you can show that you're book smart and you know, and you're not carrying all that, uh, bad habits or anything like that you're brand new. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that is, that is my advice for today. But yes, best of luck to you guys. And, um, I hope y'all keep me posted on your journey because I like to give shout outs when people get, bring me good news. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please share this. If it helped you like this, subscribe to my channel, help me get to that 10,000 <laughs> and I will see y'all on the next video.